All right. Good afternoon or good evening or good morning, wherever any of you are. This is Dr. Patrick Lopper coming back to you live to talk about a new science and wellness concept. Actually, it's a very old one. It's about a 2,500 year old concept called non judgmental awareness. And before I get into that, just want to go through a few housekeeping things, so to speak, and then we'll move on to the topic at hand. Uh, first and foremost, things are still on for the October 2nd release date of the book, The Fear Problem. Uh, that's looking good. So thank you again to Mascot Books for that. I will send out the pre-order link as soon as I have it. Um, so there's that. Uh, still, uh, as of this time, as of this day, it appears as if um, all of the talks I've done for the last month, specifically, on the concept called adaptive group identification, which I believe I've come up with. I could be wrong, and I'm always open to being wrong about that. Um, it appears as if everything is still going well with that concept. Um, I have yet to receive any name calling. Um, I have yet to, uh, I have yet for anything bad to happen basically. So that tells me one of two things. Uh, most of these videos have been up for a few weeks now, which means there's a, it's enough time for people to actually get a, a hold of them on YouTube at the very least. And given that there are no comments of a negative sort, um, and there are, is no feedback or there's no blowback, so to speak, maybe people are actually interested in the science. That might be a good sign. That might be a very good sign. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to clear that up again. If you missed my month-long series on the concept of adaptive group identification, you should go check it out on YouTube. You should go check it out on Patreon. Um, it's a very, very useful concept. And if you're looking to have more mental peace and you're looking to have a better sense of self or a more kind of, I feel more whole as a person, that concept is definitely very, very helpful. So go check out my YouTube video um, on adaptive group identification. Just Google search. Dr. Patrick Lockwood YouTube adaptive group identification and you will see a great set of videos on the idea of how to have a better sense of self if a self exists. So that's all the housekeeping now on to the topic du jour. So what happened was about two months ago roughly someone I think I was talking with someone on Instagram or someone commented on a, a picture of mine or something of that nature and they I made a post about like mindfulness and non-judgmental awareness and it kind of relates to the idea of the fact that we 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 care too much um, we we give a crap too much and that's a problem and one of the reasons that we care too much is not only are we designed to care in some ways you know you can look at Yuck Pongsep's concept of the care system and and, and that kind of thing as a literal corollary to caring about people. Um, but we also have this unhealthy attachment or this unhealthy perception of that things should be a certain way. I should feel a certain way. Uh, I should think a certain way. Society says I should think or feel a certain way. I should believe certain things, whatever it is. And I think that's just making us crazy, madhouse people. Um, I think if you look at political crap going on right now with the left and the right and the conspiracy and this and that and Trump is good, Trump is bad and, and politics is good, politics is bad, all this crap, we are very attached to things that are not as important as we make them out to be. So someone actually asked me to explain the concept of non-judgmental awareness more because it's just, it's a great tool for disconnecting from things in a way that allows you to see them objectively. And uh, it just works. It works very, very well. You can ask anyone who has tried mindfulness meditation. You can ask anyone who has gone to a Buddhist retreat of some sort or a meditation retreat of some sort. And you'll find that learning the skill, the skill, it's a skill of non-judgmental awareness will actually allow you to feel more free and basically be less trapped by your thoughts or less controlled or directed by them to a degree. Um, it allows us to not suffer. It increases our objectivity. 
it decreases our sense of anxiety and depression in that moment. And in, in my opinion, the concept of mindfulness or non-judgmental awareness, it'll make it easier for us to get what Paul Bloom calls rational compassion, as opposed to being sucked into our empathy um, from the kind of neuroscience and evolutionary science perspective. So there's another reason why kind of practicing the skill of non-judgmental awareness is a, is a very important thing. So according to the Blackwell, um, I think it's the Blackwell Encyclopedia of Meditation or Buddhism, uh, I forget what it's called, but they said, and I quote, that, dis that being mindful or engaging in non-judgmental awareness allows us to discontinue automatic interference and inference. It enhances our cognitive control capacity, our ability to use critical thinking. It facilitates metacognitive insight, thinking about thinking, and it prevents distorted thinking, which is great because a lot of us have distorted thoughts. We, we get tangled up in our head because of our past conditioning, so to speak, in the Buddhist sense, and we don't actually see things clearly. So the best way to see things clearly is to practice non-judgmental awareness. So here's the deal. This is a concept that has worked since basically the 6th century BCE, or 5th century, I think is when Buddha was around. Um, it just allows us, non-judgmental awareness just allows us to notice negative feelings, positive feelings, thoughts, just notice them and not have to control them, because that's the problem. Imagine it like you were able to have an internal experience, a thought or a feeling, and just be able to like sit next to yourself and observe yourself having that thought and having that feeling. I think that would be a wonderful experience. Now, it's not necessarily an out-of-body experience, just the ability to be detached in an appropriate way. Um, and for a better explanation of this, I would actually go listen to my second video on mindfulness. I think it's called Meditation and Wellness. It's on YouTube. It's on Patreon. Take a look at it. So I've added some new research in this talk, but there's a lot of the old research that's still relevant from that talk. So go find that one too. But basically, as I'll talk about later, the studies show that a concept like non-judgmental awareness is what affects the outcome of how effective a meditation is more than the actual act of breathing. Uh, it's kind of like the linchpin or the fulcrum of our ability to use our cognition and our perception to create a new way of seeing the world and a new way of kind of thinking and feeling that decreases our subjective experience of stress. Now, this is not to get all Deepak Chopra on you. It's just that because of how the brain is organized, we can trick our brain to function a variety of different ways. So one of the best tricks we can do, and one of the, let's say, healthiest tricks we can do is to engage in this concept called non-judgmental awareness. Um, so that's my rationale for this talk. Hope that makes sense. Um, so, on to definitions. So, let's define suffering because kind of the, the concept of suffering is the problem. So, in the Buddhist sense, um, suffering is the clinging to, the attachment to, or the desire for things to be a certain way. Things must be, should be a certain way. I should feel a certain way. I should not be in pain. I should not be sad. I should not be anxious. I should not feel X, Y, and Z thing, which is just not true. If you look at all of the literature on neuroscience and evolutionary psychology that talks about feelings and thoughts, these are just mechanisms for telling us how to function in the world. They're not good. They're not bad. They might feel unpleasant, but that doesn't mean that they're actually bad for us. And Buddhism allows us to basically not suffer. But to suffer means to cling to. We shouldn't feel. We shouldn't have. It shouldn't be, right? And that's suffering. So the definition of non-judgmental awareness, the one that I like kind of the most, is the one from a website called mindful.org. Great website. Lots and lots. Of, there's a judgment. Lots and lots of um, great articles. Very useful, thoughtful, straightforward articles on mindfulness and meditation. So mindful.org, this is their definition of non-judgmental awareness. To sit with your thoughts and sensations 
and practice observing them without reacting to them, which means without trying to fix them or ruminate over them. It's sort of like remembering your most horribly embarrassing moment and appreciating the pings of regret and shame, just finding some room to let yourself be a human for a little. That's what they said in this article. So basically, it's looking at, staring at this thing that's going on inside of you, as if you're a scientist in a lab coat going, hmm, what's that, and what's that, and what's that? I notice that it feels this way, and this way, and that my thought is making me want to do this, and this, and this. It's just noticing. Another great definition of non-judgmental awareness is to observe on purpose, in the moment, and acknowledge the thoughts, feelings, and judgments that arise without going down the rabbit hole. So basically, if you combine suffering and mindfulness together, it's we're, we're, we're looking for an attitude. So non-judgmental awareness is actually an attitude that we develop through practice. It's an attitude, if you wish to call it that. It's, it's really a statement of not only attitude, but also ethics, not just a temporary mindset. The goal is for it to not be temporary. It's a way of looking at the world in such that everything just is, and I might have a reaction to whatever is, and my internal reaction just is, it is neither good nor bad, it just is. So you can think of non-judgmental awareness as an approach to our moment-to-moment -moment experience and action. So the example that we could use right now is, I'm moving my right hand as I'm talking. I might have a judgment about the fact that I look a certain way, sound a certain way. You might be judging me that I look or sound a certain way, or I'm trying to do something intentional by moving my hands. But those are just judgments. And do they actually serve us? In the Buddhist sense, they don't. It just is. It just is that I feel impassioned enough to move my hand. And that's what it is. And going beyond that is creating suffering. It's that simple. So what does the research say about mindfulness? What does the research say about non-judgmental awareness? To try and be in this moment on purpose, staring at my experience, staring at your experience going, it is. It is neither good nor bad. Let me just understand what is here without judgment. So basically, what the research shows is that non-judgmental awareness as an attitude or a mindset is very helpful for decreasing symptoms of depression and anxiety. So there's a great number of studies in the last 20 years or so where people have been taught mindfulness meditation and taught the skill of non-judgmental awareness, just observing one's thoughts and feelings and reactions. And basically, across the board, there is some small but significant effect of the meditation on the severity of their depression and anxiety symptoms, which is great. That's what we're hoping for. We want to suffer less. Another finding from the research is that uh, using an attitude of non-judgmental awareness allows teachers to feel more satisfied with their work and less burnt out. And another thing in the school world is it allows kids with learning disabilities to learn better and achieve school skills that they're struggling with. So there's actually some educational psychology literature that shows that teaching kids non-judgmental awareness, especially kids with learning disabilities, if you teach them the skill, they actually perform better at those skills that they're struggling with, which is great. That's what we're hoping for. Uh, there's research that shows that helping um, that using an attitude of non-judgmental awareness with medical students allows them to not burn out as much because medical school and medical students kind of are challenged all the time and live very chaotic lives. So they easily get burnt out. But teaching them mindfulness and non-judgmental awareness as a skill, just sitting there and observing, actually helps. Also, there's a literature, there's a, a kind of a segment of literature in the psychology world and the treatment world that shows that a non-judgmental awareness attitude allows us to prevent relapse more easily. So there's a concept in the mindfulness-based relapse prevention curriculum uh, developed by Marlette and colleagues 
uh, called urge surfing. Urge surfing is basically non-judgmental awareness, just noticing it and riding along with it, not thinking about it, not obsessing and getting caught in it in the wave, but just being on top of it and letting it go where it needs to go and you going with it, just observing it. You should definitely check that out. Um, it's good for your brain. So there's a lot of research. Uh, I only cited a few studies here, but there's a fair amount of research that shows that using mindfulness meditations actually helps your brain. It helps increase uh, cortical thickness, white matter, gray matter, um, and allows our brain to function more effectively, which is great. Um, I also found a few studies that shows a non-judgmental awareness attitude helps with sexual dysfunction which is cool, never thought I would see that. Um, there's some sports psychology literature that shows that allowing, teaching athletes of various skill levels the attitude of non-judgmental awareness actually allows these athletes to get into a flow state easier and perform better in their given sport. There's been a lot of research in basketball and football with this in particular. Um, especially with college kids and high school kids in football. Um, there's a little bit of research that shows that using a non-judgmental awareness attitude and mindfulness skills helps prevent burnout in the workplace. Now, I'm a consultant. I help with um, businesses and dealing with staff and dealing with kind of efficiency and things of that nature. And one of the common variables is that many people on a person's, you know, a business's staff are very depressed and anxious and burnt out, they're not very mindful. They're very kind of caught up in the, if I don't, my career's over kind of attitude, which is a judgment. It's silly. Um, most importantly, according to the research, the skill of non-judgmental awareness helps us go from an autopilot way of being to an intentional way of being. And this is not to be all Deepak Chopra on you, there's a psychological reason why this is very important. So if we're on autopilot, we're reacting, we're not thinking through things, we're not responding in such a way that allows us to get the best outcome. But if we're living more intentionally, we're being more mindful, we're using non-judgmental awareness, just observing the experience, it actually can help us build self-control, according to the literature. It can help us build what most people would call discipline. And many people are lacking self-control. In fact, most people are. We have an obesity epidemic. We have a drug epidemic. We have all sorts of things that are just not helpful that we're doing that shows that we're out of control. So... We need to figure out some kind of trick for getting back more in control. And I think the best way to get in control, according to the, the literature at least, is this concept of letting go through non-judgmental awareness. It seems to be the best concept for it. So here are some practice tips for how to do non-judgmental awareness. There are two categories of tricks. We can meditate and try mindfulness meditations, or we can just engage in cognitive tricks, and either one can work. So meditating, if you're looking for a great uh, link uh, on meditating, it'll be in the Patreon kind of research section. You can find it there, uh, which means you're gonna have to subscribe. Uh, you can see my previous talks on meditation, which I'll leave the links here for you. And here's what I basically recommend, is try mindfulness meditation. Go to UCLA's website, the Mindful Awareness Research Center, which is www.mark.edu, M-A-R-C.edu, and look at their free meditations, their free guided meditations. And you can try their mindfulness meditation and see if you can tolerate it and try to be non-judgmentally aware as you just focus on your breath and just observe it. It works. Works for me, works for my clients. 
which my patience works for everyone. Just have to do it. This requires discipline. Or we can do some cognitive tricks. So here's my, my recommendation for you as a cognitive trick and only that. First and foremost, identify a topic or a set of topics that you have very strong judgments about. So popular topics nowadays are things like politics, war, religion, terrorism, economics, relationships, work, education, physical health, attractiveness. Those are all very common popular topics. So the first thing is identify the set of topics that you struggle with, that you have lots of judgments about. Secondarily, pick the most challenging topic of all of them. The one that bugs you the most, the one that you think about the most, the one that causes the most suffering, the one that causes the most fights, the one that makes you obsessed the most, that makes you most anxious, depressed. Pick the topic that bugs you the most. So that's step number two. Step number one, look at all the topics that you think about all the time that bug you the most, that cause you to judge the most. Step number two, pick the most challenging one. Step number three, set very small incremental goals for engaging in non-judgmental awareness. So maybe one more day this week, you give it a try. Maybe one more hour, you try to be more just observant, less reactive. Maybe you can walk into those situations, those topics, a little bit more thoughtfully, more just paying attention and less saying, I have to react. Step four is set up a system of reminders. Remind yourself as often as possible. If you like sticky notes, use sticky notes. Non-judgmental awareness. If you like using your phone and technology, set reminders on your phone. Make it your, your screensaver on your phone or your computer or something, non-judgmental awareness or mindfulness, whatever you want to say. And that will help you kind of walk into certain places and situations and just analyze them and not respond to them. Notice your feelings and thoughts and judgments and let it go. Step five is practice as often and as consistently as possible. And this is important because all of the long-term follow-up studies on mindfulness-based interventions show that the consistency of practice matters more than the type of meditation or the duration of mindfulness practice. So basically, I'm gonna say that again, this is very important. Step number five, practice as often and as consistently as possible. As often as you can tolerate it, as often as you can try it, as often as you have time to just take a couple of seconds to go, what am I feeling, what am I thinking, how am I doing, What's going on here? What are my judgments? How can I just observe them? Do it as often as you can. Do it as consistently as you can, because again, all the research on meditation shows, mindfulness meditation in particular, shows that it's not how long you meditate, it's not what kind of meditation you do, it's the fact that you're doing it consistently over time. And then step six, do it for a month. Then see if there are any more or less stressful you know, if you feel any better or worse related to that topic you chose. And if you feel more or less in control or have greater self-agency, great. But I say give it a try. Because basically, we're in a pretty interesting place. I think we're in a very interesting place. And if we don't try to engage a little bit more mindfully in more kind of non-judgmental awareness, I think the suffering that we experience is going to increase. It seems to be the trend that we have more hostility and more negativity and more chaos nowadays, kind of like I said in my video last week about politics. It just seems to be the trend. So that's my talk on non-judgmental awareness. As a, again, a reminder, it's useful for a lot of things according to the literature. It's not well studied, but there is some research that shows it's useful. And again, non-judgmental awareness is not the same thing as not caring in the traditional sense. So obviously, we would like to not have to care in the sense of we would like to not have to be swayed by the opinions and the thoughts and feelings of other people. Well, if you're looking for a tool to make that happen, 
this is it. But that's not to say that we don't care in the sense that we don't have loving kindness or compassion for people. So, I hope that difference is clear. To not give a crap about things that are unimportant is the goal. Because a lot of the crap that we think about all day is a waste of time. I get caught up in this trap often where I'm thinking about some non-essential thing that's not pertinent to the person in front of me, the circumstance that I find myself in, or my goal. And it's because I'm not being mindfully aware. It's because I'm getting caught up in the thoughts and the feelings and the judgments. I'm simply not just observing them. So the best thing we can do is, again, like I said at the beginning, maybe if we tried just kind of getting out of our body, looking at ourselves, feeling anxious or depressed or whatever, and going, okay, what's going on with me there? How is that happening? What is making me think and feel that? What does it feel like for me to be anxious in this moment? What does it feel like for me to be sad in this moment? What am I doing as a result of feeling anxious in this moment? And the more we think about it and detach from it in a healthy way, in a loving way, the better we do. So that's my talk on non-judgmental awareness. I hope it all makes sense. I'll be posting the research and the resources on my Patreon. I'll be posting the video on YouTube, so you can go rewatch for free. And I hope you all have a good Sunday, and I look forward to seeing you again with another surprise topic on health and wellness. Have a good day.